What's going on guys? Today's video is gonna be about how to make your first shipment on Amazon. So if you just listed your product, I mean you've been selling on FBM, but you've never put your products into FBA before, a fulfillment by Amazon, their warehouses, this is a perfect video for you to learn how to get your products into Amazon and get them selling. So before I take you into my screen and show you step-by-step -step how to do that, I first wanna welcome in anybody new to this channel. My name is Cameron James. I've been selling on Amazon for over three years now. My first year I did $1.3 million in sales, which was a crazy ride. On this channel, I share everything about my journey and also show everything I learn about Amazon FBA, whether new or just the best way to do anything. So if you're learning about Amazon FBA and wanna learn more, then make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. I promise I won't disappoint you. Otherwise, guys, let's not waste any more of your time. Let's get into how to make your first shipment on Amazon FBA. Okay, guys, so the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and log into your Seller Central account. Uh, if you guys haven't made one of these before or you're still struggling to do so, I have another video which I'll put right up here that you can go watch that takes you step by step of how to set one of these up. But I'm gonna assume for this video's sake that you already have one. Uh, if you don't yet, just, just wait till the end of this video, go watch that afterwards, get it set up, and then come back. But if we go into inventory here, so we've already listed our product. So when we're in manage inventory here, we can see all the products that we've listed on our account. And for this example, I'm gonna use uh, just a standard hose handle here, or hose nozzle, I guess you'd call it. And to get this on here, I had to list my product on Amazon, which you just do in catalog, add products. If you guys don't know how to do that, I'll put another link up here for you guys. I have another how-to video of how to list your product properly. Uh, so go check that out before uh, you move on here if you haven't got that far yet. But anyways, let's keep going here. So this product right now is an FBM. So what that means is I just made a listing. It's in FBM. So it's saying when someone buys this product that I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a package of my own and ship that to the customer myself. Amazon's not gonna do any of that. They just kind of handled the, the purchase of the item. So the first thing I wanna do here is go ahead and put change to filled by Amazon. So for some cases, especially if you go through my walk video of how to list your product, you're gonna have this selected already, but I just wanna show you uh, right here if you're in the FBM status and that you have to just go ahead and click this to change to fulfilled by Amazon. So the first thing it does here when you do that is it's asking you what kind of barcode type do you wanna use? So a manufacturer barcode or Amazon barcode. So you guys already probably know you need a UPC to get your product listed onto Amazon. Well, this is what that usually is. So say you're wholesaling or retail arbitraging or something like that, then you probably are gonna be able to use a manufacturer barcode. But in our case, we're probably gonna to wanna to use the Amazon barcode. Uh, this is actually the FN SKU, they call it. So this is what I suggest putting on your product packaging. Uh, once you get your product listed, they'll go ahead and generate one for you on Amazon side. You put it on your product packaging, or if you're sending in units from home, you go ahead and put that little sticker, uh, which I'll show you here in a little bit, uh, put that on your package, and then go ahead and send that into Amazon. This is a much more straightforward way of doing it. So uh, I wouldn't doubt Amazon barcode and get that FN SKU uh, on your product when sending it into Amazon. So once you select Amazon barcode, you go ahead right here and select convert and send inventory. So next it's going to ask you, does your product have anything dangerous in it, any hazardous materials? So this is gonna be pretty simple for most people. You know, battery information, uh, does your product have a battery or not? In most cases, it's gonna be no. Uh, in this case, it is gonna definitely be no. If your product does have a battery in it, go ahead and select yes right here. That's gonna ask you a bunch of more questions about your product uh, to make sure that you're sending it in properly. Uh, it's a little bit of a headache, but you know, if you're sending in a product with a battery, that's just something you have to go through. Uh, next, product regulation information. Is this product considered a dangerous good, hazardous material, uh, regulated for transportation, storage, and or waste? Uh, in this case, no. If you guys are confused, if maybe your product may be in there, uh, just know that you can use this guide right here to understand uh, what type of products are in this category. Usually things like, think like pesticides or uh, anything if you ingest could be dangerous or things that are flammable during shipping, like you know batteries, but uh, in some other cases, maybe some bug spray that is flammable or pressurized. Uh, so just make sure you guys read up on that if you're not sure if you know your product may be in that category. But most of the time, you don't have to worry about that. Just hit no here. Not sure here just makes you go through the same loopholes as you would, uh, plus more, uh, if you would select yes here. So just make sure you guys are doing your research before you know going through this and selecting the right answer. So I'm gonna hit submit right here. All right, then we hit save and continue. Real quick, I just wanted to show for anybody already in FBA that doesn't have to go through the FBM to FBA process, this is how you go ahead and send in replenished inventory. So go ahead and select this, and this will go ahead and take you to a step further into the process of what you would have to do when you're in FBM. I just wanted to show that real quick uh, so you know exactly what to hit to start your shipping process uh, for that product. All right, guys, so next it takes you to the fun part. So this is where you start to 
to go ahead and put all this information together uh, to start making your shipping labels and get everything going for your product to send in. So right here, the first thing it's gonna ask for is ship from. So where are you shipping this product from? For some of you, it might be China. For some of you, it might be your home. I suggest not actually putting the Chinese address in here. You can, it really doesn't matter. So what I actually do, a little pro tip here, guys, uh, and, and do this at your own risk here. Amazon doesn't like you messing with their logistics. What I do here is actually put one of our addresses that's actually in California. That way it doesn't have to go cross coast to you know New York or wherever, East Coast, uh, maybe the Midwest, Texas. It can go right there to LA. And since I put this address in California, I'm more likely to have a warehouse there in LA or the West Coast. Now, this isn't a guarantee. It's not a guarantee at all. Amazon's gonna do its best for them. So if you sell most of your products uh, in New York City, they're gonna make you send it all into New York City. That way it's centralized. It's, it's kind of in the Epic Center and it's nearest to where people buy the most. But if you're selling products consistently at a higher volume and across the country, it's gonna give you a likely chance of getting a port in LA or San Francisco I just save a little shipping dollars. Don't worry about this at first. If you're getting your first product in there, don't worry about this. This is more of a pro tip for when you start doing large volumes, but I just thought I'd, I'd go ahead and share that with you. But just go ahead and put your address here of your business or your home or even the Chinese manufacturer. And it really doesn't matter here if you're shipping from China, but if you're sending it from your home, obviously put your home address right there. Okay, so next guys is packing type. Uh, we have individual products or case pack products. So what this means is that if you have individual products, it, it means you're gonna go ahead and put more than one type of product in one box. So you're letting Amazon know that I have you know, 10 different goods with 10 different uh, FN SKUs or labels on it that are gonna go in one single box. Case pack products are gonna be one item in one box. So if you're selling private label and you have one product, you know, 500 units of that one product, this is where you're gonna be at is case pack products. Uh, if you're doing like retail arbitrage or something like that, wholesale maybe, maybe you're gonna be in the individual products category, but case pack products is probably where you're gonna end up. And we're gonna hit continue to shipping plan next. So this is where it's gonna ask you, how many units are you actually sending into Amazon? So maybe you have 500, maybe you have 100, maybe you have 2000, maybe you have 50. Uh, this is where you're gonna put that in. So units per case. So how many units are you gonna put in one case? So for us, we're gonna do 10 right here. So there are gonna be 10 uh, water hose handles, or spouts or spigots or whatever you wanna call it uh, in one box. So next is number of cases. So how many boxes are you actually gonna send in? Uh, let's do 10 for this example. So 100 units total. Uh, something to be aware about right now, this could change down the line and it probably will. Uh, just with everything going on right now, Amazon's actually limiting uh, how many you can send in of a new product or if you're a new seller uh, to uh, 5,000 there. Uh, I was just gonna do 500, but I made a mistake there. But still, it's gonna tell you limited restock. So Amazon's limiting how many you can send in at a time uh, as a new seller, uh, as a new product, just because they don't wanna be overwhelmed for Q4. So I believe this right now is at 200 for the limited restock. Yeah, 200 to your limit there. So in this case, say you have 500 or 1,000 goods, like what do you do in this circumstance? Well, in this case, what I would do, personally, if it was my first product, I'd send those 500 units or 1,000 units to my home with 200 just going into Amazon. And then when those restrictions got lifted, once you start selling them at a good rate, I'd go ahead and send the rest in from my home, which is super easy to do, uh, just using this process here. If you don't have that option, say you live outside the United States or don't have anywhere uh, to store them, uh, you're gonna want a 3PL here. So what this is is a third-party logistics company, which you can Google about. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna send the extra units to them they're essentially like an Amazon warehouse, but they're just you know third party, right? They're not Amazon, they're not FBA, but they ship and store goods uh, for tons of different brands uh, and places like that. So you can send that to them, and then when those restrictions get lifted, go ahead and have them send the remaining units to Amazon for you, which uh, in most cases, 90% of 3PLs are gonna understand how, uh, how to ship goods into Amazon, so that process is very smooth. It just costs a little extra money to actually house the goods and everything like that. So keep that in mind when you're first starting your product. Uh, this is something you're gonna have to hurdle over for just a little bit until Amazon kind of sorts through this and, and gets through Q4 uh, and makes changes back to normal uh, after this whole thing kind of settles down. Uh, but let's just do 100 here, like I said, for this example, and then go ahead and hit continue. So next is gonna ask you about prep. So Amazon actually has prep services in place. So say your item needs bubble wrapped or say it needs um, certain styrofoam or say it needs even labeled, you know, the FNSQ labeled on it. They provide all these services for you for a fee. So this is super expensive and something you don't wanna have them do just because it's just not worth the cost. 
You always want your manufacturer to take care of this for you or do this at home if possible just because of the fees they charge you per unit to do this. So what you do here is hit apply all and then we're gonna go down to hit no prep needed. Again, if you need this, this is fine. You can go ahead and you know Google uh, Seller Central uh, prep for Amazon and kind of look through like, okay, what, what does my product need on it, right? Does it need to be bubble wrapped? Are they gonna get upset uh, that it's not you know, uh, in a certain box or something like that. So go ahead and Google that and, and get on their Seller Central forums and figure that out. But most cases, just make sure your unit is in good condition uh, in a poly bag if needed, uh, you know, bubble wrapped if needed so it's not breaking and then select no prep needed right here, hit choose. And they'll even tell you right here if they already know that your product requires a certain prep to it, it's gonna ask you who preps, you know. So say right here, it says this product needs bubble wrapping. It's gonna ask you who applies this, merchant or Amazon. You're the merchant uh, or you can have Amazon do it. So in this case, we'd select merchant and make sure that they're not charging us there and that we're taking care of the bubble wrap. Next, we're gonna hit continue. So here is where you actually print the FN SKU label. So that Amazon barcode we were talking about earlier. So it's asking you who labels. I believe Amazon charges about 20 cents per unit, which is it's crazy high uh, to label your products with the FN SKU. So we're gonna hit merchant here, and then number of labels, because we have 100 units, we need 100 labels. And then we can actually print these labels for ourselves. Say we're doing this from home uh, and we need stickers. You can go to Walmart and grab those Avery uh, sticker packs and then, you know, whatever it is, it could be 21 labels per one. I just get the dimensions right. So go get a pack of the Avery ones and then go ahead and put them in your printer. And then you can print these right here, uh, no matter what type of Avery labels you have at home. Otherwise, I would have my manufacturer go ahead and print this on my box or label this themselves. That way, you know, you don't have to worry about it. You're not getting charged by Amazon and you're all set up there. Uh, so do what you have to do here, but that's how you take care of that. And then we're gonna hit continue right here. So in this step, we can actually name our shipping plan, uh, which is awesome because you know if you start uh, selling a lot of different goods, making a lot of shipping plans, it gets confusing. Uh, so for this, I like to be very specific. So I put 100, um, let's see here, hose, nozzles, and then I like to put the date here. Uh, let's see, 0813, I believe the date is. And then we can see it's shipped to Indiana, uh, Greenwood, Indiana here. So this is the abbreviation. Uh, for the Amazon warehouse that takes in goods. Now, this address I sent to, I know you can't see it, but it's actually from the Midwest, so uh, that is why you're seeing Indiana and not LA or, or maybe a different place. But this should be, especially if you're shipping from home, this should be near your home or the nearest uh, fulfillment center that takes in goods there. And for people looking for quotes from their you know, freight forwarder and for shipping uh, to get their product over from China, uh, this is where you get your, um, your fulfillment center code to give to your freight forwarder uh, to get an accurate quote. So when they're asking for an address to ship your goods to, this is what they're asking for. Uh, if you guys are just shipping from home, don't worry about that. I just wanted to hit the people uh, who are private labeling uh, and getting their goods sent over from another country. Uh, so let's hit approve and continue right here. And then we go ahead and hit work on shipment to finish up. Uh, just to let anybody know who's seen maybe you know three different uh, fulfillment centers that they actually have to send into. This is normal, this is Amazon just saying, uh, your goods, we want them dispersed around the country a lot quicker. Then you're gonna have to split your shipment into three uh, and send those goods back that way. When you're sending in standard size goods, you know, at 500 units for the first time, it's most likely gonna go uh, just to one place, but just know it's a possibility that your shipment could get split up into three. But we're gonna hit work on shipment right here. So this is the grand finale, guys. This is where all the good stuff happens right here. So let's talk about shipping method first. So we have small parcel delivery. I'm shipping individual boxes. So it's exactly what it sounds like. These are not on pallets. These are individual boxes that are being sent into Amazon. So think if you had 20 boxes at home uh, that you filled with your goods and you're gonna go drop these off from UPS that you stuffed into your uh, Honda Civic or whatever it may be. The second one here is less than a truckload. So this is when you're actually shipping in pallets uh, to Amazon. So if you have huge orders uh, from you know China or if you're a manufacturer, this is most likely what you're gonna have to use Talk to your freight forwarder, talk to whoever's shipping your goods and ask them if they're putting on pallets or not. If they are, then less than a truckload. Uh, it's, it's just the same process. It's just letting Amazon know that they're coming in pallets. And for most people at home, uh, in even most cases when you're shipping over from China, it's gonna be small parcel delivery. So next we're gonna select our shipping carrier. The first option is gonna be for about 90% of people. So Amazon partnered carrier, UPS. So what this means is you're gonna get Amazon's discount with UPS to send in your goods and you're gonna prepay here on Amazon 
to get the labels to go drop off at UPS. So you're gonna pay here on your Amazon account and then you're gonna go ahead and print the labels off which I'm gonna show you exactly how to do. Put those on your master cart and boxes and then go take them to the nearest UPS. If you say you have another carrier, say you're doing DHL from China, which is a very popular option, you're gonna go ahead and select this and you're not gonna pay on Amazon and you're actually gonna pay DHL uh, to them on their own website or over the phone or whatever it may be and then they're gonna take your goods and ship it to Amazon and take care of that whole process for you. But like I said, in most cases, it's gonna be Amazon partnered carrier, especially if you need to pay for shipping and it's gonna to go to UPS uh, by your hands. Otherwise, you're gonna choose other carrier uh, and pay your freight forwarders straight up uh, for the delivery of goods and not worry about actually paying Amazon and getting the printed labels. I know it's a little confusing for some of you guys shipping outside the US. Uh, if it is, just hit me in the comments down below uh, with your situation and I'll get back to you and try to give you the best answer possible. Otherwise, let's keep moving on here. So next we'll say, how will this shipment be packed? Uh, everything in one box or multiple boxes? In this case, we have 10 boxes. And so we're gonna hit multiple boxes. And then just like we did before, it's asking for units per box configuration. So we have 10 in each box. And then number of boxes, we have 10 again for a total of 100. Here is where you're gonna need to put the weight of the box. So ask your manufacturer if it's coming from there or weight on a scale at home. Just know Amazon gets very, very angry. If you send in a box that's over 50 pounds, uh, don't do this, they'll fine you or even temporarily suspend your uh, shipping abilities uh, for Amazon FBA. Uh, so just know that. Also know that they don't allow boxes that are over 25 by 25 by 25. So keep them under these three dimensions right here. I like to go a couple inches below at max just to make sure that you know, you know, you get an angry warehouse worker who says, no, this is, he rounds up to 26 or 25 and a half or something weird like that uh, if he's just having a bad day. So I make sure that I give him a little room of error uh, just to be on the safe side. Same here, you know, 45 pounds about max for me. Uh, but let's put this back down to 10 and let's put this back down. I'm guessing my box would be around 10 by 10 by 10 uh, as well here. And so they're gonna hit confirm. Just a little tidbit here. If you guys have boxes with different dimensions and sizes or weights, I'll just hit add another box configuration right there. Uh, let's go down here, so shipping charges. So again, this is in the case of me having the boxes at home, me wanting to go to UPS and go ahead and drop these off to get shipped into Amazon. So this is what this is right here. So I'm gonna get charged $50 uh, straight up, which is actually a really good price for uh, 10 boxes uh, for 10 pounds. And then when I accept these charges right here, Amazon's gonna give me the UPS shipping labels to put on my master cartons or my boxes that are holding all my units. So for this, I use blank rectangle label. Uh, if you have a thermal printer, then obviously go ahead and select that. Uh, ship date, so this is asking you, you know, when are you shipping this out? Uh, let's say today we're taking it out and then we're gonna hit print box labels. So on these labels, we have two things going on. So this one right here is actually just labeling the master carton to you, right? To your product and to your seller account to make sure they know exactly what's coming in. The second part is actually the prepaid label for UPS. So this is what UPS is gonna scan uh, to make sure that you've already paid and go ahead and deliver your goods to that spot. If you're not using UPS and haven't prepaid and you're paying say DHL or uh, your freight forwarder or whatever, it's gonna be just this right here that you put on your boxes. Just wanted to clarify that for you. If you're doing pallets, you're gonna have uh, pallet labels, which are just really simple. Uh, just another uh, pretty much piece of paper saying what the pallet is. And whoever palletizes are gonna have to stick on each side of that. Again, your freight forward takes care of that. If they have any experience in Amazon, they're gonna know exactly what to do and it's gonna be no hassle to you. Uh, just know that's a part of the process. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna print these out, go ahead and tape that on your boxes. And then we're gonna go down here and hit complete shipment. Next, you can actually see uh, your products if they've been shipped or not, and they'll have updates on each tracking code for your product once UPS gets them, scans them in, and takes them through the process. So you can go ahead and watch uh, your products getting delivered to Amazon, which is super cool. If you ever need to go back and check on things and you can't find that shipment plan, you go to inventory, hit manage FBA shipments right here. And then you could go ahead and see the 100 hose nozzles right here and what's going on with the shipping status. You can click into here, go check things out again. And that is how you make your first FBA shipping plan. So I hope that helped guys. I hope that was straightforward. If you got any questions at all, hit me in the comments down below. I know a lot of people have unique situations doing different things. And it's so hard to cover every single thing, right? For every single uh, person situation. So that's where the comments come handy. Also go follow me on Instagram. 
and I'm on there quite a bit now, so you can go ahead and DM me if that works better for uh, your questions about Amazon or about your shipping plans. Uh, so make sure you do that. That's CameronJames.co and the link's in the description below uh, to go ahead and find my Instagram. But that is it, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And make sure you guys go check out my other YouTube videos. I work really, really hard on them. Uh, it drains me for the day, but I know it's worth it because I get so many cool comments uh, helping people out on this journey to make their Amazon FBA business a reality. All right, guys, that is it. See you in the next one.